Recently, I focused on Middle East, Central Asia, Afghanistan, Pakistan. So after my trip here, I will uh, fly to Washington, D.C. Uh, to join the, the conference on Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Central Asia. So I would like to take this opportunity to share my view with you um, um, about China's role in Middle East. And uh, if you are uh, interested, I can also talk about the Central Asia, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and AFPAC around 2014. And uh, of course, firstly, I focus on Middle East. And uh, <clears throat> uh, since the time is limited, I think I focus on the, uh, on the, uh, the recent uh, the relations between China and Middle East after the, the so-called Arab Spring. I never call this Arab Spring. I call it changing Middle East or something like that. And uh, <clears throat> basically, uh, if you talk about political relations, it's not really a very uh, important influence about, about the changing the government uh, in, in Middle East. And uh, <clears throat> because China now uh, keep the relations with this new government. Uh, Libya, Yemen, and Egypt with both Muslim Brotherhood and the military uh, leaders. Uh, almost no any change, yeah. Uh, but economically, I think very many the uh, the very serious negative influence. Uh, firstly, to the trade. Before the 2010, uh, Chinese uh, Middle East trade is basically is uh, the many the many container from China to the Dubai. Dubai is the center. Can ship all the Chinese goods, something made in China, to the all Middle East. But when the crisis broke out uh, in early uh, 2011, uh, the transportation, the expenses for transportation, expenses for insurance, all increased. For example, one container. Three years ago, only from Shanghai to Dubai, only 900 US dollars. Now, 2,600 US dollars. And also the insurance. And also many the uh, businessmen don't want to send the goods to the, uh, the travel area. Uh, only now, the, mainly the, from Dubai to the GCC country. And the Chinese businessmen and don't want to really do business with Libya, even with Egypt. And the GCC countries, okay, uh, Saudi and uh, Qatar and uh, UAE all. But everything is, uh, so expensive, expenses is increased. And in the small city called the Yiwu, only three hours driver from Shanghai, there's 30,000 Middle East businessmen there gather there. Ten mosques, and also small Jewish community, small India community, but the most is Muslim. Ten mosques in a small city. And uh, the mainly for the trade, is the EU became the trade center. You can find everything made in China, like this, like this. All, all these people send a container to Middle East, everything. So I was in, in uh, Egypt, in Israel, in Saudi, in, in Doha. You can see, you, you just go around the city, the market, everything made in China. But now it's more difficult because some country is crisis. The businessmen don't know whether they can make money. So it became very uh, careful about this. And more serious, thing, uh, serious, in fact, the influence is investment. And in China, uh, Chinese company invest a lot, lot in Middle East for construction. 
We were very surprised when the civil war broke out in Libya. We have to bring thirty six thousand Chinese back. I I was surprised. I, even I'm a specialist on Middle East. I think maybe we have more people in Algeria.、Uh, now more people in Iraq and、uh, maybe Egypt. And、uh, but I was surprised. Thirty six thousand Chinese in Libya. We don't have ships. We rent ship from the Greece, from the Malta.、Um, with the help, we bring all these people back. And Chinese, Chinese freight, the freight in the、uh, India Ocean anti the piracy goes through the red,、uh, goes through the red、uh, sea, goes through Swiss Canal to Mediterranean Sea. It was the first time <laughs> in the history of China. Five hundred years ago, even Zheng He. Just go around the Indian Ocean, never go to Mediterranean Sea. But when the Libya crosses, Chinese Navy almost reaches the Benghazi because we want to bring our citizen back. So now the also、uh, the most Chinese company、uh, still don't want to come back. The new Libya government want to Chinese. Company come back. Our minister of the, our the minister of commons, organized delegation to do the investigation in Libya. Finally, the conclusion is it's not the time to back to Libya. They have to pay for their Chinese company's previous work. They don't pay for this. They work for several years. They didn't get the payment. So how we can come back? And Egypt, some the company hesitated. Iran, of course,、uh, some company left. And、uh, only in the Saudi, in the GCC country,、uh, the, the Chinese investment is still、uh, going on. And Iraq, very interesting.、Uh, more and more company come to Iraq for the oil. So I still remember the two thousand. Uh, three, when the George W. Bush began the war in Iraq, <coughs> the people in the <coughs> street of the United States said, "No war for oil." But now, the, you know, after war, no American company in Iraq. Chinese company got five big oil fields, and but all the company don't want to go to the southern area. Only go to Kurdish area. CNPC just got a project in the Kurdish area. Only this northern Iraq is more safe. But now Chinese company, I should say, come back to Iraq. And、uh, Iran, I will take uh, uh, talk later because the sanction, U.S. sanction.、Uh, so investments are mainly、uh, in many countries, the changing country,、uh, stop, stand still. But in the Saudi, in the GCC country, continue, and of course in the Maghreb, in the、uh, not back to Tunisia, but very active in Algeria and Morocco. I think maybe we have more people in Algeria. Yeah. So、uh, I think most influence the negative influence economically. So now mo most the Chinese companies still waiting to see what happens. Uh, in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Libya, and in、uh, in Iraq, in Iran, and、uh, in Syria, of course. But Syria, we really don't have a lot of investment. Unlike Russia, we don't have investment. We only have three hundred Chinese students now. They come back. <coughs> we don't have military navy base there.、We、don't have the weapons selling business. Uh, security. I think the, also some influence. The China became more active in the in the diplomatic、uh, arena in the Middle East since 2010. Ah,、uh, 2002. We、uh, first time appointed the, the special envoy for Middle East affairs. Now it's Ambassador Wu. It's a good friend of mine. 
Uh, he visits the Middle East at a regular time to visit all the country, meet the leaders. And we have appointed in uh, 2012 the special representative for Syria uh, affairs. And we are now very active to join the six states the negotiation with Iran and uh, the US, Russia, the UK, France, China, and Germany. And we have uh, ten, uh, uh, we have 1,000 1, soldiers joining the UN peacekeeping forces in southern Lebanon. The most people don't know this. This is uh, since uh, two, uh, the 2006, you remember, the war in Lebanon. Before that, we already had 300. After that, as a request of EU, and also especially the France, um, they want to uh, China send more soldiers. We send 700 more, so now it's 1,000. They're very successful to do the mine sweep and the construction. And uh, we also <coughs> a close red line. Usually, we before that we only send soldiers join UN peacekeeping forces, but mainly the, the soldiers for medical and construction. But uh, since uh, 2000, I think, we sent three warships to join anti-piracy. This is really fighting, not really uh, uh, for medical and construction. Also recently, very significant, so we sent 300 soldiers to Mali, also at the request of the France. Uh, this is really fighting unit, not really for uh, medical. And uh, so I think the politically, economically, security, all this area. Of course, I will say a few words about the energy. And you know, our trade uh, mainly with Middle East is uh, oil and gas. Oil, gas, basically not very uh, serious influence. And the Middle East now almost 55 to 60% of China's import oil. Saudi is number one, uh, almost uh, 54 uh, million of ton, 54 million ton in 2012, always number one. And uh, the, our leader visited Saudi, the King Abdullah promised if we reduce the imports from Iran, they will provide the same, even double, no problem. And uh, Iran used originally number two, now uh, I think Russia became, Russia became number two. Iran uh, last year is uh, 15, uh, 15, uh, 15 million tons. Uh, reduce, reduce. And I will talk about the Iran uh, issue. Iraq, very interesting, increase. Uh, number, number five. Number five is almost 10% uh, of China imports oil. And all other countries, Oman, Kuwait. But Qatar became number one in the natural gas but not by the uh, pipeline, the N, uh, NLG, uh, the, the natural gas. Uh, Qatar became number one. Algeria, of course, natural gas is very important. And uh, China uh, already began to invest in this area. For example, the, we, uh, the, our Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Wen Jiabao visited Saudi, they signed an agreement to build a refinery uh, factory in the Yambu, is in the Red Sea er uh, sites, not in the Persian uh, sites. And uh, so it, it seemed to me the energy cooperation mainly China now uh, diverting to the GCC country, uh, very careful about this changing country or the troubled <coughs> country, still have to waiting for them. So uh, 
So this is basically the change in Middle East or crisis in Middle East, the influence over the China Middle East relations. Then I uh, focus on several uh, hot hot points. First, Syria. Syria, people always ask me why China veto three times with Russia. I think this is basically is uh, for uh, it's quite differences. Russia, they really for interests. China, I I don't think we have really important interests in Syria. But uh, our leader, the mainly for the principle, the principle is very strong opposed any foreign military intervention. And uh, 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 for us, uh, the, the, the voting in for about Libya, uh, we always think we made mistake. And NATO used this resolution, bombing and kill uh, Gaddafi, but now Libya is the worst situation. It's a weapons bazaar and even kill the ambassador of the United States. This is really crazy. So uh, for our leaders, for most scholars like me, so think we cannot uh, let Syria become another Libya. So I think that, of course, China and Russia work together to veto, but it's quite different. And now, of course, we're very active to support the Russian-U.S. joint proposal to destroy all the, nuke, all the chemical weapons. Uh, we, we will join the Geneva the Peace Conference. We hope all the party can join the conference and uh, find a peaceful uh, political solution. About Iran, uh, basically China has three principles. Firstly, uh, we, uh, uh, we cannot accept it, Iran with nuclear weapons. The same to the international community. So that's the reason why we joined six countries negotiation with Iran. Secondly, we very uh, strongly oppose any military attack on Iran. Uh, this is what I said in the United States, in Israel, told my friend. I always uh, told my experience in Iran. 2005, I paid a short visit to Iran. It was the first time for me to Iran. I visited uh, Tehran, we visited uh, uh, Isfahan and Shalat. Uh, of course, we met many government officers, but we also met many young students. And I was told that Iran now, the 75 million people, and now almost 40, more than 40 million, were born after 1979 Islamic Revolution. That means they are under the young, is only younger than 33 years old, 34 years old. And these people were. Uh, invited me to their home. They said, I'm very happy. They said, we need an Iranian Deng Xiaoping. Unfortunately, we don't have Iranian Deng Xiaoping. I said, OK, if you have, I'm happy. Yeah. They really want to reform, want to reform. They want to country uh, could be uh, reformed, uh, could be um, uh, go, uh, go forward and people could be live uh, better. And I found uh, a lot of things very old. All the car made in 1970s. All the building made very old. So I said, you have all your guess where the money go. They said, well, we don't know. Maybe money go to Hezbollah or something like that. So I think this young generation is really uh, very, very good. And uh, I'm surprised to see they watch some of the Western movie and uh, like the Western music. So I told my friend in the United States, uh, Israel, and if you bomb them, you bring this young generation to other sides, to radical Islam, to Osama bin Laden. Uh, so, uh, so I think the, our principal, principle is very strong opposed any military action. 
And third, well, of course, we try our best to protect the Chinese company's interests. That's very interesting. We, we joined the, uh, the United Nations sanction. We support this. So we stop the business, but we oppose United States uh, uh, unilateral uh, sanction. But now U.S., it seems to me they're trying to make this sanction as a domestic law. If it became domestic law, Chinese company should make the make choice. If they have uh, business with both U.S. and Iran, they, they should make decision. If they want to keep <coughs> business with U.S., they have to leave Iran. That's the situation. They like Huawei now left Iran because they want to keep the business with the U.S. Also, the same thing against the banking system. So many business you cannot do, cannot do. So basically, we support the United Nations. We don't support the United States unilateral session. But the company have to make decision. They have to. Some company have to leave Iran. But uh, you know the uh, basic differences between Iran and North Korea is North Korea said that we want to nuclear weapons. Iran never said that. They said that only for peaceful uh, use. So we have same problem with Iran and with North Korea. Yeah, we also joined the uh, economic sanction uh, in North Korea, so we stop the. Banking uh, cooperation with North Korea. So that's a situation. Uh, so we now still hope the, the six states, Iran, the talk, could be uh, uh, find a, a peaceful solution. So we're very happy to see the new President Rouhani. He met the President Xi Jinping in September 13 in Bishkek. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit, and uh, as I know, he promised he will he do his best to find a peaceful solution, and also he talked to President Obama by telephone, and uh, new foreign minister also uh, trying to find a way. So we still hope, uh, you know, that we can find a peaceful solution, no war. And uh, Egypt, Egypt. We basically hope the Egyptian uh, Egypt could be peaceful stable. In fact, in the early mm, early uh, 2011, uh, my friend in Israel uh, sent a message to China, U.S said whether we can work together to try to keep Hosni Mubarak. China said yes, we would do this because the President Mubarak is an old friend of several generations of Chinese leaders from Mao to Xi. So uh, at that time to who? And, uh, but U.S. policy changed every day. In the morning, uh, they said uh, Mubarak is not a dictator. Huh. In the noon time, some people say that Mubarak, it's better for Mubarak to stay in the power until September. But in the evening, President Obama said, President Mubarak should gone, go now, something like that. So if U.S. change the policy every day, China, Russia, Europe can do nothing. So then when the new uh, president uh, came to power, he visited China. We try to keep good relations with the uh, Muslim Brotherhood. Before that, we didn't have any connection with Muslim Brotherhood because this is international underground organization. We don't have any connection with Hamas. But uh, we have good relations with Turkey and Sudan. You know the party in the power in Turkey and Sudan is Muslim Brotherhood. Same. With government, of course, we keep good relations. But with the party, with the group, we we were very careful because they are do underground 
something wrong. Then the military leader came to power. We still don't call the coup, call this coup. And uh, we support the, the, this new government, trying their best to keep the stability. We want to keep good relations with uh, this leadership. So now, the, just recently, I think we had some of the top leaders talk. We will do our best to support the Egyptian people, Egyptian government, to control the situation, to develop economy, to keep the peaceful solution, to keep, uh, keep the peaceful agreement with Israel. And so all this is very important for the security of the Middle East. Finally, a uh, few words about China-Israeli relations, China-Turkish relations. Because uh, this is all talk about Arab country and Iran. And China-Israeli relations is basically is very good uh, because uh, we have traditional friendship. And uh, my city, Shanghai, we, uh, it was the only city to open the door for the Holocaust victims. Uh, even the United States closed the door. Uh, so the Jewish people never forget this. And also we work together in anti-terrorism uh, area. It's, uh, I should say very frankly, we uh, learned a lot from our Israeli friends during Beijing Olympic and Shanghai World Expo. They give uh, some very important uh, suggestion. We accept it. We now do this and uh, it's very important for China, for security of China. And the uh, only problem uh, between China and Israel is the United States still have veto power on the military and high-tech trade. And the Israeli uh, really want to sell something to China, but they have to get permission from the United States if this is military and high-tech. I think this is the only uh, obstacle between China and Israel. But we understand the situation of Israeli are facing. And with Turkey, it's very f interesting things. Uh, you know, uh, uh, in China, we have Eastern Turkish separatist movement. And among them, several groups is really terrorist. And uh, the Eastern Turkish movement, basically, they are based in Turkey and in Munich, in, in Germany and in Turkey. Uh, but Turkish government guarantee they will not allow any the group do the anti-Chinese activity in Turkish territory. Uh, but uh, something, uh, if something happens, it will be very dangerous. For example, uh, in the July 5th, 2009, in Xinjiang, Ulumuchi, there is some riot. The next day, the pr Prime Minister Erdogan said yesterday in China, genocide. In fact, he didn't know what happened. So then the Chinese media in very strong response. The documentary in the TV said who did the genocide. Then is a documentary about how Ottoman Empire killed one and a half million Armenia and Kurdish or something like that. But finally, both sides uh, find some misunderstanding. So three months later, the Prime Minister Erdogan sent the, his representative to China said apologize. Because he said we didn't know the 200 people were killed. Only two is, is Muslim, most is Chinese uh, Han people. But after that, every people surprised the China-Turkish military cooperation is developed so fast. You know the 2010 China Turkish is a joint uh, military exercise by the Air Force. Chinese fight, fight, uh, plan to, uh, to uh, landing in Turkish territory. So NATO is very, very nervous about this. And recently, uh, Turkish decided to buy Chinese missile. Now very strong pressure. I don't think this business could be successful because the United States, every people come. 
But maybe Turkey just want to better price. So I don't know. So, uh, so this is China-Turkey relations. Basically now it's very good. But if something happens in China, maybe, yeah. Because we have 20 million uh, Muslim. Uh, largest is Hui people speak Mandarin. And four is Turkish speaking, one is Persian speaking. Tajik is Persian speaking. Four is Turkish speaking, Uyghur, Kazakh, Kyrgyz, Uzbek. And the most, most of them is uh, almost 100% Sunni, very moderate. But the reason is, especially after 9-11, after Taliban came to power in Afghanistan, some radical people want to find opportunity among them. So the small group, now the base in mountain area between Afghanistan and Pakistan, they want to do some the jihad or something like that. So Turkish people, uh, Turkish government understands this, so they never support this. So this is a very complicated relations between China and Turkey. I think I should uh, stop here, to keep more time for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.